Great morning, holy brother. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us this morning on our pathway to peace inside the Garden of Peace. If you're following along, we're on page 298, and today's lesson is called Tempered Tones. That's right. We always got to take it down and make sure we're keeping our temper and tone properly arranged. A tense husband must make every effort to appear calm and relaxed. Super chill. That's right. And he should learn from our patriarch, Abraham, from Abraham. When Abraham arrived in Egypt, he was worried that the Egyptians would kill him in order to take Sarah as a wife for their paro. The Chizkuni writes that despite all this, he calmly requested of Sarah, please say, what, what should she say? That he was his sister, yes. For my welfare and for your sake, my soul will live in your virtue. From Genesis 12, 13. Despite his fears, he spoke to Sarah calmly, very relaxed, in order to prevent her from panicking or becoming distressed. Our sages say, a pious person keeps his worries in his heart, but on his face it always shows joy, happiness, and smiles. Try no matter, sometimes there are turbulent waters going on inside and there's a storm that's raging inside your soul, inside your heart. But you know, the other people are looking to you for a calmness. They're looking to you to have that peace of mind. So even though sometimes things can be crazy and swirling around viciously, try to put on a positive face and a good affront to help those around you, to uplift them, to make them have peace of mind, to keep everything in control. The man of the house set the tone. Yeah, you should go out to Hashem. You should cry. You should scream. You should pray. You should dance. That's between you and God. And be able to express those emotions. But when it comes to your wife, be that strong rod, that foundation of faith to be able to help support her and to be able to make your kids good. Be that backbone. Be that shoulder they can cry on. You be strong for them, even though you have to have time to express your real feelings, but not in front of them. Be able to do it in good outlets to be able to support everybody else at the same time. The man sets the tone for the house. If he's calm, if he's easygoing, his wife and his children find their home relaxing and a happy place, a great environment. If he's strict, if he's ill-tempered, they will not want to be around him. They're not going to be around you. They're going to want to run away. Because you don't have a great presence. Bad-tempered husbands wonder why their wives and their children are never home. They never want to be home. They're always running to do a thousand other things. And they find other ways not to be in your presence. Because they don't want to be dragged down. They don't want to be pulled down by your negative attitude. To overcome stress and worry, one must trust in Hashem. There's no other way but to have a foundational faith and not to burden his family with trepidations. They depend on him, and he has to depend on Hashem. Yes, of course, you also need strength. You also need a core. You have to somewhere from where to draw to. But it is from the ultimate, infinite power up there. If he's worried and he's insecure, as if he has nobody to depend on, then they will lose their confidence in him, the man of the house. As a result... The wife and the children will feel even greater and more stressed out. Our sages teach us that late on a Friday afternoon, a man should ascertain that his wife has made certain proper Shabbos preparations. One of these is lighting the Shabbos candles. Obviously, he cannot see if they've been lit or if they've been not, or even if they have not been yet lit, even if they've not been lit yet, to instruct his wife to do so. Our sages are very careful to point out, though, that the instruction must be done in a super calm, cool, collective, and giantly gentle manner. Lighting candles after sundown is a severe transgression of the Torah. Yet, he is still not allowed to speak to her in a way, God forbid, that would ever upset her. If so, he should certainly be careful about maintaining a calm, and pleasant tone of voice when talking to her 
about every single day, daily, easy matters of matters. Now, Rabbi Moshe Meir Weiss used to say that it's always super important on Arab Shabbos to be the one to set the candles up for your wife so she's not stressed out when she has to come and do it. And then she has to start cleaning out the old ones, preparing the new ones, putting everything in. And some women even like it when you light the, the wicks of the candles beforehand for a few seconds and then you put it out so that when they come to light it, it'll be so much easier later, later when they light it, the candle light very quickly. So always be careful to try to ease your wife's mind, to take stress away from her, whatever you can do before Shabbos, to make it easier for her. So set up the candles, throw out the old ones, at least put in, put in the new ones, so that when she comes to see it, wow, beautiful, all set, nicely arranged. She'll have a little bit more ease of peace of mind, so she's not running to do another thousand things before Shabbos to get ready, so she has things a little more prepared, because you can help with that. You can make it easier for her. But at the end of a day's work, a husband must find time for his wife. By rushing in and rushing out again, he creates such a tense, crazy, terse, annoying, aggravating atmosphere. His wife and his children all want to see him. They want time to speak to him. The kids want time to play with him. Yeah? They vie for his attention, knowing that guess what? He's going to run out of the house yet again. He's going to disappear very soon. This is stressful for every person in the family. Ideally, come home prepared to give them all the quality time and attention that they want, that you have, and that they need, that you can do. If it is impossible every single night because you're such a busy person, a father should set aside time weekly, one-on-one, -on -one, with every one of the children, even if it's only for a few minutes, even if it's only once a week, whenever it might be, even for Shabbos, when you have a day off. Try to make time to play games with your kids. Try to time to read them a story. Try to make time to play with them, whatever it might be. A wife, though, needs quality time every single day, every night, whatever it might be, preferably at least a half an hour. Just make sure she knows and she's aware that she'll never, knowing that she has her own special time and not worrying about when she might have it, whether it's in the evening, whether it's in the morning, whatever you can carve out in that part of the day to make her feel super special, it will help her to cope, to make her feel that she is calm all day long. If she knows she has this outlet of time, she can express her emotions and to be able to talk about her feelings and to be able to connect to you, to say, hey, honey, listen, I'm going to be here for you. You know, you can have that time. We'll talk about whatever you need, whatever you want to discuss, whatever you want to do. I am here for you. I love you tremendously. And this is the most special part of my day when I get to spend with you at the end after I do everything else. One of the sages of the Talmud would always begin his lectures with something humorous, something funny, some kind of joke. He knew that his students were very much in awe of him, but he also knew that they needed to feel at ease in order to fully absorb the teaching that he was going to give them. The joke would relax them and open their minds up for the learning that was about to come. The Talmud also tells of a story of Eliyahu the prophet accompanying Rabbi Baraka in the marketplace. Eliyahu pointed out two men who merited to be in the world to come. Rabbi Baruch approached those men and he said, Hey, what makes you so special? What mitzvah have you done that you merited the world to, you know, such greatness in this world? So they answered him that they were particularly jocular. They were like jokers and they would seek out sad people. They would look for the downtrodden people in the marketplace and they would run over to put a smile on their face to cheer them up to do something funny, to do something silly, to uplift their moods, to make them feel so much better on the inside. The Marsha explains, they merited the world to come by cheering up the downtrodden. They also brought joy. They brought joy to not only the people, but they brought joy to the divine presence, to God. For Rabbi Meir teaches that when men are sad, 
the divine presence is saddened with them. They're bringing down the mood of divinity. A wife is comparable to the divine presence. By making her happy, by making her feel much more relaxed, a husband also brings joy to Hashem, divine presence, and will merit the world to come. Hello, you know how many diamonds you have sitting around you at your feet, waiting to be picked up? All you need to do is bend down to grab them in front of you. The Torah commands, and he says, shall cheer the wife that he has taken. In Devarim 24, 5. A wife's happiness is a husband's responsibility. You hear that? A wife's happiness is not her responsibility. It's your responsibility. You have to make every effort to cheer that woman up that you married. If she's not happy, it's your responsibility. It's on your account. It's on your head. It's on your shoulders to make sure that your wife is happy. You hear this? Her happiness is the most lucrative investment you can ever put your money into, both in this world and the next world. When she is happy, when the woman has a smile on her face, he'll flourish and he'll succeed in every single thing he does. We talk about the Gemara says many times, all the bracha, all the bountiful blessing comes on account of his wife. So if she's not happy, if she's upset, and you're not doing what you need to, you're going to be cutting off your income. You're going to be limiting all the resources. You're, you're the one causing all the problems in your own life and making the wife not happy herself. Ravi Nachman writes in Sefer Amidos, where there is truth, there is peace. Where there's MS, there is Shalom. In Truth 122, peace is only possible when a home is categorized by truth and real, absolute honesty. Where there is falsehood, where there are lies, the Divine Presence departs. The Divine Presence runs away from. It cannot be there. The Talmud says, liars will not receive the Divine Presence. As it says, one who speaks falsehoods will not be standing before my eyes. Psalms, Tehillim, 1017. The Torah emphasized that we must distance ourselves from dishonesty and say, keep far away from a false thing. Exodus 23, 7. Sometimes a man is faced with the dilemma of wanting to do something that he knows his wife is not going to agree to. Hello? Let's say you want to do that thing, but it's going to upset her. If she finds out, you're going to be in big trouble, my friend. So, if he forgoes that idea, in order to avoid arguments with her, he will be frustrated. He will be upset. If he goes ahead and does what he wants, she's going to be upset. So you're in a big crossroads right now. Do you do what she wants and make her happy, and then you're going to be upset? Or do you do what you want and say, hey, I don't care if she's upset right now because I want to do this thing because it's important to me. He may then contemplate doing what he wants to in secrecy. And he says, hey, maybe I'll do what I want. And I know that if she found out, she would be upset. Okay, so I'll do it in a way where she's not going to find out. I'll do it in a way where I'm not going to tell her. I'll make an alibi. I'll have another excuse for me that she won't find out what I'm doing. This way she can still be happy. She doesn't have to know. And I can be happy because I'm still doing what I want to do. He estimates that as long as she doesn't find out, beautiful, guess what? We'll both be happy. I'll be happy and she'll be happy. In theory, guess what? This will work. Beautiful, great idea. But in practice, the deceit, the lies, the controversy, the way that she's going to do it in a co covert way is going to be found out. It will absolutely, ultimately be discovered. And when she does find out what he did, her trust in him is going to be shattered. That glass is going to be destroyed. And everywhere will be such a mess because he wants to do it in a way she won't find out. But guess what? God is the one in control of everything. If you're trying to do something that's not right, God will make her eyes be opened. He'll make her find out 
from a friend of a friend, or she'll be able to receive a text message on one thing that you said by accident. You think God doesn't have ways to make her find things out? What are you, a fool? Who do you think you're really deceiving? Just your wife or Hashem up above? He's the one who wants you to be good to your wife. Don't try to cheat the system because you're ultimately be the one who's going to get screwed over. Once she finds out that she cannot trust him anymore, she won't be able to be close to him. She won't want to be close to him. Their relationship is going to be so badly damaged. The more lies that she discovers, the worse the relationship is going to be. Don't try to get around in circular ways to do things that will hurt her that you don't want her to find out about. Be the real tzaddik. Be the gentleman. Be the good person. Walk on a straight and narrow path of mitzvahs of the Torah. Because, yeah, you know what? You might be giving up some right now. And it might cause you a little anguish and some upsetness and some anger. But in the long run, the relationship that you're building with her is going to pay off exponentially a thousand million times more. The brachas that God wants to bring you down from the heavens, He's waiting to shower you with so much unlimited goodness and greatness. And you're looking for a quick fix. You're looking for a way to be pleasurized right now. But you're giving up so many jewels, so much money, because you're going to be destroying the relationship. Stop thinking about the here and now, the instant gratification. This whole world nowadays is so screwed up. Society has so many values that are not on track. They're so off kilter. Stop looking for other things and open up the Torah. Open up the books to help you learn, to teach you better, to know what the real infinite values are from Hashem and walk that path. You're going to be giving up a little now before an ultimate gain. When you go to the gym, it hurts. You put on weights and it's going to be frustrating. It's going to be annoying. It's going to be painful. But we know those results are coming. We know what you're building towards. So please, look towards your best ultimate, greatest, forever future. And whatever you're doing every step of the way should be building towards that goal to what you want to achieve. Look at the light at the end of the tunnel, not the little bumps along the way. And with that, have an awesome, deliciously, amazing, super spectacular day. Thank you very much for joining